Hello and welcome back to our online multiplayer connection series. If you don't know this series, we're going over how to use the uh, online subsystem for Steam to start and host and join sessions for multiplayer gaming. So if you haven't followed along, make sure you have checked out the previous video series I've done about online replication for gameplay. This one is entirely all about getting the menu set up to allow you to connect to your friends. So in the previous episode, we set up the menu system and got that working in our game. Demonstrate that here. Yeah, it's gonna be our menu. Um, and we are now gonna hook those up with some custom events and functions. So here's all the stuff we made last time. And we're gonna go into online game instance. And in the game instance, we're gonna set up some custom functions that will handle various aspects of our online multiplayer. So we're gonna make, first of all, a custom event. And we're gonna call this one host session. Now sessions are the name is the name given to any online multiplayer match and server. So when you call this custom event, we want it to set up a and start a new session. So if you go right click and do create session, you'll be presented with a few options you need to include here. First of all is the player controller. Then you've got the public connections required and if or not you're using LAN. We're not going to bother with LAN, LAN we just go straight into just online internet multiplayer. So in here, we're going to hook this up and we're going to need to plug in some various aspects here. Most notably, the public connections. So how many number of players should this server be set up to accept? So on the host session, we're going to set up a new input on here. So go to new input and we're going to give it number of players and give that an integer. This we're going to actually promote that to a variable and we'll call that number of players that'd be okay because that would be a server setting that we could use later on if we need to and then we're going to plug that in and then plug that into our public connections for the player controller this will be whoever is clicked on this button so in other words you just use the get player controller so we'll get whoever is clicking this event whoever's calling this event to use this now, number of players is all well and good, but we may also want to replicate that across so that other clients are familiar with that uh, setup of how many players they should expect in their instance. So with that variable selected, go to the right-hand side and choose replication and take it to be replicated. Compile and save that. So now all the clients will share that same information that are connected to this client or this server rather. So when the host clicks create session, this is going to be an asynchronous uh, call. Basically, it's going to keep trying to do this. And when it's successful, it will call it a success. And when it's failed, it will come down to failure. So on failure, we'll do an error message. And on success, we'll take, go to a lobby screen. Now, for the lobby to happen, we need to create a lobby room for players to hang out and get together. So the lobby is another level here. Uh, you just want to open it to a blank level, nothing in it at all. And we're going to tell our game instance to set it to open level on success so from there open level and you may get two options like this by name or object reference you can use either so if you're an older version of unreal you may only have one uh, by name otherwise you can just use object reference which is a bit easier and quicker if you're using by name just type in the name of the level you want to go to so here in the drop down i'm going to choose lobby and i want to show the advanced options now the options here, you need a string. And here's where you put keywords for levels to uh, use to initiate. And the keyword we're gonna use here is listen. And that's gonna tell that this level is now a hosting uh, multiplayer gameplay that is gonna be listening out for other clients to connect to and so forth. So on failure, we're gonna do an error message. And for error messages, we're gonna create a whole new widget to show. So let's go to that, let's create a new widget. And we'll call this one error message widget. And for this one, I'm going to leave the canvas panel on uh, because we're going to fill it with a black blurry background. So on here, we're going to do a blur, a background blur, drag that on. And as you can see, we want to make it fill the whole entire screen. Now, the way you do this correctly is you go to anchors, take the fill then change all the offsets to zero. Then we're gonna go down to the blur strength and I'm gonna turn it to 10, nice and blurry. 
Then I'm going to put in a border into the canvas panel as well. And this is going to be all black and again covering the whole entire thing. So on that border, go to anchor, full screen, offsets, all set to zero. I'm going to go down and change the brush color to black and the opacity on the alpha here to 0.2. Okay, so next we're going to design the actual message box itself. So that's pretty simple. We're just going to do a, another border into the canvas panel. And oh, I want to actually want to wrap that with a size box. And that size box, I'm going to go to the, uh, the child layout here and see width and height override. We're going to just change the width override here to let's say 500. When you've done it, make sure you tick size to content and it'll fill it to the correct size there. Inside your size box, we've got a border and that border we're going to make black. We'll change the brush color to black. And inside that, we're going to put some text to display the ever. So drag in some text. And this text is going to say ever. And I'm going to change the color of that one to red. Or like a light pinky red anyway. And change the size of it here to 36. And I'm going to tell my size box to be anchored to the center of the screen. So to center anything to the center of a canvas panel, you need to go to the anchors, change the anchor to the center one. Then you want to change the position to zero and zero, and then finally change the alignment to 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And I'll keep it dead center of that screen. I'm going to go back to my border here and the text. I'm going to right click on the text, wrap with vertical box. And the vertical box is going to contain two things. It's going to, well, three things actually. It's going to contain the error title here. We're going to have an actual error message. And then finally a button to close the error and dismiss it. So on here, we're going to uh, drag in another bit of text in there. This be the actual message itself. And then finally a button. And the button, you're going to want some text on it too. So button. And then inside the button, some text. Okay, so there is our basic building blocks. Let's just make it a bit more pretty. So uh, the middle block, as I said, is going to be changing depending on what we want. Um, and we'll just type in the default name of ha um, some error has occurred. Seek help. And I'm going to tell this thing to wrap at text at 500, seeing as at the size of my size box. Actually, let's drop that down a bit smaller. Let's go 450. Oh, 450. There we go. And the text on the button here, we're going to make, say, something different. Obviously, we'll say here to dismiss. And I'm going to change that to be black text, like that. Now, all of this is going to have some padding. So on the padding here, I'm going to put in on the board, on the vertical box, I'm going to put in padding of, say, 20. Add that in a little bit, like so. And on the button, I'm going to give that padding in the top by another 30. There we go. There is our error message. Now, for this, I need to make sure that this text in the middle here is variable because it's going to be changing based on whatever we want to show. So tick is variable. And we'll call that one error message text compile and go into the graph now as long as you tick that is variable box you should find your error message text appear here so on here we're going to go to pre-construct or actually we can just do it on the construct be totally fine take error message text out just get and then do set text and that will allow you to change the text inside of this text box the in text here we're going to make a variable so drag this, uh, or not drag it out, but right click on it and do promote to variable. 
and there's your text variable there and we'll call this one uh, text to display and this is going to be editable so tick that and expose and spawn tick that this allows us to change it when we spawn the error message uh, whenever we want to spawn it hit compile and save that finally we're going to go to the end of the construct and we're going to go add to viewport so as soon as it's created it will do this and then add itself to the viewport hit compile and save that we now want to do the button to close this so go to your design view click on the button rename it and we call this one dismiss button and the is variable box should already be ticked scroll right down and you'll see the options for on clicked pressed released and so forth we we'll do on clicked and we're going to do simply remove from parent hit compile and save that and that will close the window away from the screen hit save on there close this now and we're back on our game instance and on failure here we're going to do create widget and we're going to choose our error message widget from the drop down and you should be able to see the text to display if you don't see this all it means is that you haven't ticked the expose on spawn box tick that on the widget and you'll be okay okay so text to display here we're going to show and uh, we'll call this one failed to create a session please check network connection there we go hit compile and save that so the other half of this is to create a join session custom event so right click here custom event click join session hit compile then from there we can type in session and you can see the option to join session here and it should look like this Again, you can see it's a latent function again with this clock symbol. So it keep trying to do this until it succeeds or fails. Now the player controller here is quite simply the current player controller. And the search result is going to be whichever blueprint session we find. Now this value we're going to need on here, this input. So we need to know which session we want to join. So the variable type for this is a blueprint session result. Now you want to go to your join session custom event, go to inputs and create a new input for this and we'll call it session. And then from the drop down, find that blueprint session result. You can now plug that directly into your search result there. Again, on failure, we're going to put in an error message. So I'm just going to copy this and paste this into there like so. And we'll do failed to join session. Please check network connection. Hit compile and save that. Now, because we're joining a session, we don't need to do anything on open level or anything like that. The whole session idea uh, subsystem will already do that for us and make us join the server that we've gone to. It will travel with them. So that should handle it all for us. So we're done here, we can finish these off. I'm just going to comment around these and put this one hosting and joining a session. There we go. So that will do for this episode. In the next episode, we'll go through the process of actually setting up the host to actually host a session by inserting how many number of players they want to introduce and so forth. And then displaying that list of sessions available to the user so they can choose one to join. So join us in the next episode over on right now on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can catch that episode plus many more of my videos well before anyone else. I want to thank you to all of my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. It really is amazing that you guys support me. So thank you again so much. If you have any questions or any suggestions for future content, please leave a comment and make sure you're subscribed. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.